I'm a loud kind of guy anyhow. I'll grab that. I don't know if I can handle two things in my hand at one time. I'm a people's presenter, so I'm going to stand right here. I won't be up on the podium there. I'm going to be here with you. So thank you for letting me present today. Hetty talked a little bit about billing. I'm going to talk a little about the generating asset. So the new wind analytic approaches for the industrial internet of things. That's a mouthful, isn't it? So my name is Scott Abramson. I'm the director of our operational excellence group for Duke Energy, and specifically the renewables group. So isn't that exciting, renewables out there? So the old generating assets, they're nice. We need them. They keep the electric flowing. But renewables, the future. So with the future comes a lot of data. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how we handle this. So let's talk about who Duke Energy is. Anybody know who ever hear Duke Energy? Sure, right? OUC, we hear about them too, their utility. So Hetty has the spot of being the best. We, we claim the biggest. So we got to share those uh, platforms. So a uh, $115 billion asset-based company, 7.2 million electric customers, big stuff, right? And uh, we have assets internationally, and we have them in essentially our largest customer base is in six states. The tri-state area we, we show on the map right here. Let's see if I can get that laser pointer to work right there. So Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, and then North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida, those six states. And uh, we're a Fortune 250 company. And uh, if you need to know about our stock symbol, it's D-U-K, and it's doing well. So anyhow. Now, as I said, I'm the part of the renewable business. And I just told you that there's six states that the majority of our customer base is. But our generating assets are all over the country, west, east, north, south, as you can see here. We have wind turbines, we have solar farms, and we have battery storage. But today I'm going to focus on our wind turbines and the amount of data that we collect with them. And their wind turbines, it's got to spin, right? So. How long will an asset last? Is that a question that we all want to know? If you're in manufacturing, if you're in the energy business, like General Greg said in the open session this morning, energy is a very important part of the US, the economy, and all the things in between. So we have 20 and 25 year PPAs. What's a PPA? A purchase power agreement. Now, we have a situation that we have to deal with, and then we have a challenge that we have to deal with in our renewable business. What are these situations? 743 turbines that we have to look at. So we have essentially 743 power plants that we have to look at individually. A lot of data. We've been talking about data, security, and all the things in between in these different sessions today. So it's a critical part of everyone's business. And to boot, we had OEMs taking care of these assets for us in the beginning. And they're all coming off of warranty within five years. And the data that we see in these assets is greater in one turbine than a, boiler, a tri traditional boiler and turbine set of past. So a lot of data that we're talking about here. So we need to figure out how we get advanced analytics and prognostics working for us so we can keep that asset healthy. So if you look at these situations that we're dealing with um, and the challenges, let's, you can read the situations, but let's talk about the challenges because I think a lot of you out there are feeling the same pain we are in a big utility like Duke Energy. Again, the large amounts of data, um, how accurate is the data, um, what is the ratio of uptime to downtime, that data's got to tell us what the asset health is, and then we have to be able to use it to, to have the greatest level of uptime and reduce our downtime. And then inventory costs. Who deals with inventory costs? No matter what business you're in, right? You need to know what your inventory is, what your critical spares are, all those types of things. 
And then the financial risk associated with those assets. So that's where advanced analytics and prognostics come into play. You need to know what the useful life of your assets are. So where do you start? Foundation. You have to have a foundation of data. And so that's what I want to go into a little more detail with you. Again, wind turbines, you got to spin. So I call this the wheel of fortune, although I'm not Vanna White, but this is the wheel of fortune of data. So you look at the big machine data, the large amount of data. You have sensors. You're looking at this data 24-7. You have all kinds of cycles going on with a renewable asset because you can't predict the wind very far out. So you have to get all this data in, and you have to determine what is the health of that asset. So when you look at it in traditionally, you, your thermal, ter, thermal side of the business, you could walk around that asset. You could look at the data, your operators out in the field, your engineers in the office. But today, a renewable asset like a wind turbine, 300 feet up in the air. You can't walk around that every day, can you? So when we look at our data, we, had, we said, OK, how do we put all this together to make sense so we really could keep that uptime on those assets? So we went to the market, and we got introduced to GenPack. And they had some really unique ways of looking at data. The term that they used, and I'm stealing that term, by the way, it's called stitch the data together. Stitch this large amount of data together so you're able to predict the asset's health and then have it perform the way it should. Does that make sense? So then, when you look at this data, it is a puzzle. And the pieces are a little bit dispersed. How do you fit it all together? The challenges that you have with a work management system like Maximo or SAP, or if you have um, a lead time for a part for inventory, or if you have POs that are out there that you have to tie to a work order. All those things that you need to stitch together use advanced analytics and prognostics to make that asset have the greatest amount of uptime. So again, those challenges, right, that you experience or we experience as a company, we needed help with that. And again, that's how GEMPAC came into the fold for us. So we have these acronyms and these uh, key phrases called SMART technology, or we call it an iTurbine or iWind. Everyone have an iPhone? We use the i everything, right? So if you look at this graphic here, it's, it's really busy. But what we're trying to show you is we're getting data from SCADA. We have sensors on our equipment. We have algorithms that are in SCADA. And now we have to take those algorithms with the help of a company like GEMPAC, put it all together, the term stitched, and then produce an output that tells us what is the health of that asset. How do we keep that asset running? Does that make sense? So what is that outcome? So GenPack said, I'll put this data together for you. I'll use your data, your mass amounts of data, and then I'll put together it into component buckets. As you can see on this slide right here, you have a mechanical bucket, you have an instrument bucket, you have an electrical bucket. And what you're looking at right here, essentially those in the reliability world will call this a bathtub curve. So in the bathtub curve, if you look at it right here, I'm going to use a laser pointer here to break it down for you. So we know this is infant mortality in this piece of the curve. This is normal wear out, and this is end of life. And sometimes we call that remaining useful life. And so we need to know what is the remaining useful life of that component. And when you know it at the component level, you can predict a failure rate, and then you can address that failure or that potential failure. And that's the key of keeping that asset running for a longer period of time. 
That's one of the things that GenPact helped us do. Put it together in this failure curve that was meaningful on a component level. So lo let's look a little bit closer at that. You, you look at this here, this is a cost projection for maintenance. What's a big cost on our assets, especially a utility, a big utility like we are? Our costs for maintenance are very high and we have to manage those costs. So when you look at this cost curve, you have an expected cost curve, which is your dashed line, right? And then you have an ind industry curve, which is your solid line. So what is this really telling me? What am I seeing here? What I'm seeing is, and we did this, we have an internal model that we looked at. And then when we put this data together, or GenPack put this data together, together for us, they, our eyes were open to, hey, we're going to look at higher cost sooner in the life cycle of our assets. And we needed to know that so we could plan for that maintenance and help reduce our cost and keep it within our budgeted constraints. So, again, I turbines, smart wind turbines, that's where the industrial internet of things to come makes sense to all of us. And so GenPack brought to us a solution, an all-encompassing solution. We have so much data out there, and you all probably have the same problem. Where How do you put it in one place? And so there a reliability look at your turbines, or a component analytics, or an optimized maintenance planning. You put that all together on one platform, so you're able to look at the, your whole fleet of turbines in a smart environment, and then use these um, advanced analytics and prognostics together to be able to drive costs down, and then downtime down, and uptime up. Make sense? I like to keep it simple so we're all on the same page. So, when you look at an industrial asset optimization or the smart wind farm, the smart renewable farm, we're, again, we're talking about wind farms versus solar farms, you have this layering of this intelligence, this advanced analytics, th these prognostics, right? And you look at what's your installed base. Then you look at the layer of the analytics and the optimization, the smart algorithms, Right? Well, you put all that together, you stitch that together, and then you have a result, a machine-to-machine -machine connectivity. What essentially you're doing is you're having a clone of that machine, that physical asset, in an analytical way. And so when you look at that, now you can take that analytical approach and then predict what you're going to see in a failure rate, as we saw in those bathtub curves. That's revolutionary for the, the energy business. In the manufacturing world, you're more exposed to that. But in the energy business, it's more traditional. So when you get this platform in front of you, it becomes another way of doing business more cost effectively. Connectivity, analytics, prognostics, all those buzz, buzzwords mean something to your bottom line. So what do we recommend with our fleet of assets and working with a company like GenPack that has taken us to the next level of analytics and machine health and machine training? Collect your data accurately and meaningfully. So you have all this data, but it has to be meaningful to you. It has to be able to produce a result for you. Now that you have the data, Again, do something with it. Stitch it together. Take that data, the, the fault data, the data coming in from your SCADA system, your work management sy system, and then make that work for you. Build an I wind atmosphere. There's that buzzword again, right? The I in front of anything makes it today. Keep assets healthy through prognostics. That's the goal of any utility. 
like Hetty said, they want to be reliable. We want to be safe, reliable, economically sound, and we want to deliver our customer the best utility service we possibly can. And through these advanced analytics and prognostic approaches, we can deliver that. Leverage advanced analytics techniques, machine learning, artificial intelligence. So we have young engineers that come to us. They like the renewable business. And when they see this type of platform, they dig right in. They make it part of how they engineer data so we have an advanced approach to our generation fleet. Then the business outcomes, again, be a financially sustainable utility. We're the largest, but you don't hold that very long. You don't hold that place in the market unless you use these techniques and you partner with people like GenPAC and you do those types of things. It all makes sense when you put it all together. You wrap it up in a nice package using advanced analytics and prognostics. Your bottom line will see it very, very quickly. And essentially, I'm three minutes ahead of schedule. I was so excited to share this with you, I zoomed right through that.